We've been popping off with a lot of Styles Explained videos recently, but let's not forget our roots. Let's go back to the OG Explained Style videos, Techniques Explained, with a special request I received on Discord from the Forbidden Archive a whole whopping nine months ago. Today, in this video, I'm gonna explain the aura of Yujiro Hanma. Other characters have this aura as well to some degree, but Yujiro's is undoubtedly the strongest, and while this is more of a phenomenon than an actual technique, I'll be explaining what the aura is, what it can do, and what it is in real life. Or at the very least, what it's based on from real life. So without further ado, let's get to the explanation. So first, what is this aura that these characters have? Is it straight up magic nonsense, or is it something real? Well, as is the most often case in Baki, it's kind of both. An aura is just a character exuding their presence or a particular emotion. When someone is upset, they typically have plenty of visible markers that they're not happy, but if you know a person well enough, or if the feeling is palpable enough, even if they attempt to disguise these signs, you can instinctually pick up on their state of mind, likely picking up on micro-expressions that you aren't consciously aware of. That's the idea behind an aura, the expression of one's overwhelming presence or power, or the expression of a particular feeling or desire. The most common auras we see in Baki are auras of power and auras of bloodlust and or fighting spirit. A good example of an aura of power is every time a character in Baki is able to sense or feel how powerful a character is, despite no overt display of said power or a lack of ability to sense such a thing from the character in question, such as when average citizens walking on the street can instinctively sense that Yujiro is a threat despite him simply walking. They don't have any special ability to sense his power, like when Yujiro sensed Baki's bloodlust in Japan from Africa, or when fighters sense Musashi's power. Yujiro just naturally exudes such a dominating aura of power through his micro-expressions, his natural appearance, and his domineering confidence, as well as a dash of his supernatural fighting spirit, that they can feel it. Think of it like this. A person that can hear just fine hearing someone speak isn't that abnormal, but a deaf person or a person with headphones or earmuffs on hearing someone crystal clear must mean that the person speaking is extraordinarily loud. This is tied to an aura of fear, since it's hard to cause the kind of fear we're going to discuss in something without the power to threaten their life, but a good example of a deliberate exertion of an aura of power to consciously flex that power to its limits is the inciting incident to making this video. When Yujiro Hanma, during the 12 hours that Baki prepared to fight him after the entire Kid arc, wherein Baki defeated the best fighters the world had to offer, to his knowledge at the time, and then proceeded to train with two of the most powerful fighters he knew, with dozens of pounds of additional weight equipped, simply laid on a bed in a hotel and waited for the fight without preparing at all, and exerted his aura on a nearby plant, wilting it to death over the course of those 12 hours, without ever having touched it. This segues us into the second half of what auras are shown to be capable of in Baki, the Aura of Fear. This aura acts on the primal, instinctive survival instincts, or self-preservation tendencies, of every living creature. Why did the plant die? Well, it's not a consciously thinking creature, but as a living being, it does have instincts, especially ones of survival, and so Yujiro expressed an aura of both power, the power to destroy it, and bloodlust, the desire to destroy it. Those two feelings mixed together are, to the plant, an inevitable, immutable threat to its very existence in this world, so what does it do? Well, again, at a subconscious or unconscious level, I imagine that it begins to panic. Yudro's presence is domineering, suffocating, it's unable to breathe properly, and probably has a difficult time with even the most basic, autonomous processes of self-preservation due to the utterly massive, indelible, and terrifying presence of Yujiro to the point that the plant eventually dies, succumbing to anything from the plant equivalent of a heart attack, an inability to breathe or even take in nutrients properly, or even simply a complete system shutdown. Now, this is an extreme case, as the plant was subject to this for an extended period of 12 hours, so what are the typical results of this aura? Well, let's look at one of the best, most well-explained examples of Yujiro's passive fear aura while walking down the street. As we can see here, and as the narrator explains, the combination of Yujiro's evident martial arts skills, his fighting spirit and spiritual strength in general, his very clearly visible physical strength, and his physical appearance of power and confidence, causes everyone that can see him, everyone even near him, to experience a fight-or-flight response, even though he has no desire to attack or harm them. Just his sheer presence alone is enough to instill such a primal self-preservation fear in these people, 
fear for their lives akin to that of an Impala faced with a cheetah, that it affects them on a cellular level, specifically all 60 trillion of their cells. They are completely frozen in fear or completely terrified on a cellular level, on a genetic level so deeply ingrained that every single part of their body without exception is completely and totally affected. Wholly focused on survival even though the mind can't think of a way to survive, as running would result in death just as swiftly as fighting, so all they can do is freeze. Now, typically auras are visible in Baki, denoting how much power the aura is exuding, and while that's more of a supernatural effect, an aura being so powerful it creates some sort of visual hallucination of a heat haze because of the sheer pressure being exerted on the mind, even without a visible aura, Yujiro's aura of fear is so powerful, he's able to make a battle-hardened veteran, a soldier who's been through a storm of missiles, crack under pressure. Just being able to sense him, like say his fighting spirit or his bloodlust, a more extrasensory perception or instinctual sense, feels akin to being stabbed in the back of the head to even the likes of Hanayama, a man whose grit and sheer power of will need no introduction or explanation. One of the most impressive displays of Yujiro's aura to this day is when he drove three active duty soldiers insane with his presence. The threat of him killing them if they tried to run or fight or oppose his will in any way was so certain and deadly that they subconsciously made the decision to fight each other and harm themselves in order to make themselves less of a challenge for Yujiro to fight, less rewarding or interesting or worthy of his attention, a decision Yujiro applauds them for as, were it not for those sharply honed subconscious instincts, they'd all be dead. In essence, the human body instinctively detects Yujiro as a threat. And while other characters in the series such as Baki, Pickle, Musashi, and others have this same aura, Yujiro is undoubtedly the best to do it, with his aura being a signature of his character. The only thing I've seen that's more fiction than fact was when Yujiro shook an entire skyscraper with his aura alone. That's more akin to the physical power of aura seen in series like Dragon Ball and had, to my knowledge, no actual basis in reality as cool and as impressive as it was. Speaking of reality, Let's close by discussing four things. What is an aura in real life? Are auras of fear real? What are auras of fear in real life? And is it possible to die from fear? Well, an aura in medical terms is a sensation you experience before the onset of a seizure, but that's not what we're talking about here. Spiritually, which is part of what we're talking about, an aura is a form of energy that radiates a few inches to a few feet in an oval shape around the body and can change based on thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Being that this is a spiritual belief, whether or not it's real is entirely dependent on who you ask, but that's the reason why Yujiro's, and really every Baki character's, spirit's power and emotion play such a significant factor in their aura's effect, and why it's visible to even those without extrasensory perception. But what about the half-rooted and scientifically verifiable fact? I personally believe that it's possible for people to have auras indicative of their emotional state or the state of their soul, but what about the instinctual cues being picked up that I talked about earlier? Well, the quality or feeling that seems to surround a person or place or to come from them is what's noticed subconsciously through instinct. That kind of aura is what people pick up from Baki characters with their instincts. Okay, what about an aura of fear? Sure, it stands to reason that, should a person or creature appear so shady or dangerous that you notice on either a conscious or subconscious level, that'll give you feelings of anxiety and distress. If the feeling of danger is bad enough, if you have a reason to believe that your life is being threatened, you can absolutely enter fight or flight mode. So why do we enter fight or flight mode when in life-threatening situations in real life, or at least situations where you'd be exposed to a life-threatening situation? As I discussed with the plant, we owe that to our survival instincts or our self-preservation instincts. Our survival instinct is a behavior or set of behaviors present in all sentient organisms, typically activated by fear or pain, that ensures the survival of an organism. Well, if it's about self-preservation, why do some people freeze like in Baki? Why did the plant die if it was trying to survive? Well, fight or flight is a bit reductive in reference to the plethora of responses a creature can have when faced with imminent death, but when your brain decides in that split second that fighting is a lost cause and you won't be able to escape successfully, that either of the primary responses are equally certain to lead to death, the brain can't really process what to do and simply shuts down. It freezes. That's why some people freeze, and death is kinda related to that. 
Not only can you just freeze permanently, like in the case of the plant, since it couldn't escape, and the pressure of Yujiro was never let up, causing it to wilt away, but with a response to fear specifically over pain, your brain starts pumping adrenaline through your system, which in turn, if done to excess due to the brain deeming it a worthy risk to try to survive your encounter, can cause ventricular fibrillation. Adrenaline opens calcium to the heart. With a lot of calcium going to the heart, the organ has trouble slowing down, which is something that can cause ventricular fibrillation, a specific type of abnormal heart rhythm. Irregular heartbeats prevent the organ from successfully pumping blood to the body and lead to sudden death unless treated immediately. Your body will instinctively respond in the best way possible to survive in a life or death situation, but should the situation be so certain that no course of action will abet it, or so terrifying that your brain flushes your system with a disproportionate amount of adrenaline, or some other chemical that will cause your organs to begin to fail when experienced in excess, a sacrifice your brain is willing to make in the face of certain death, the reactions we see in Baki are certainly grounded in reality. Alright, that's really all there is to it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to let me know by liking the video. If this video gets 90 likes, no less, within a single week of upload, I'll be dropping the next Techniques Explained video, a video explaining the Tiger King technique from my pal Brino, right after. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this or anything else on the channel. Comment down below what you thought of this video, anything interesting you'd like to share about the aura, or really anything else and leave suggestions for what else you guys want to see, be it techniques, styles, or even character analysis videos. Haven't done one of those in a while. Okay, I've been Red Fox, the uploading YouTuber, and this has been Grappler Baki Techniques Explained. I'll see you all next time. Peace.